Hello, and welcome to my presentation on mathematical model of quantum cognition applied to bistable perception for the Yours exhibition presentation. In recent decades, past work has shown that quantum cognition and the perception of static bistable images can be modelled using quantum probability theory and a quantum concept known as the quantum Zeno effect. The aim of this project is to value, evaluate a currently proposed model of quantum cognition and to be able to extend it to a non-static optical illusion with the objective of developing an improved model and to then design an experiment to test the predictions of our new and improved model. The non-static optical illusion we will be using today is known as a Lisa Zhu curve. And to know what that is, we shall continue on to the next slide. If you look to the right, you'll see an example of a Lisa Zhu curve. This curve is a two-dimensional curve that is typically perceived as rotating in three-dimensional space, normally around some sort of imaginary X or Y axis. And if you look at the curve now, you may notice it rotating right or left, and it might spontaneously switch between the two. This is the type of behaviour that we're going to be exploring in this model. The Nekazino model is a model that predicts the expected survival time for a perceived direction of a Lisa Zhu curve. For example, how long we might perceive the curve moving right. And the main quantity that we need to look at in this equation is this value known as delta t right here. This is for the purposes of the quantum Zeno effect. Delta t is known as the time between the overlap of the Lisa Zhu curve lines. This is known as a self-occlusion. And according to the starting literature, it is heavily suggested that most of these changes in the perceived direction of a Lisa Zhu curve happens at these self-occlusion events. And what the quantum Zeno effect states is that if we increase the rate of these self-occlusions, i.e. the time in between the self-occlusions is smaller, the expected survival time for a perceived direction should actually increase. My job during the Euros project was to actually design and implement the actual experiment we would use to test the predictions of our model. This included actually producing the Lisa Zhu curves as a video format to be played at different rotation, rotating frequencies and the actual Python script to record the time between uh, the directions changing. This was all done using Python 3.9. And while the actual experimental design was done in collaboration between me and my supervisors, the actual implementation of the experiment was done solely by myself. The methodology of the experiment was that the user would look at the Lisa Zhu curve for an extended period of, period of time, say one minute, and then using the mouse button they would denote the direction they could perceive the Lisa Zhu curve moving, i.e. left mouse click for left, right mouse click for right. And the actual quantity we were measuring was the time in between these direction changes. Not necessarily the time in between mouse clicks because you might accidentally misclick, but the actual time in between the perceived change of direction. In the analysis, we, um, I programmed the analysis myself and in the actual analysis, we removed any redundant or invalid clicks. While the actual design and implementation of the experiment was the actual end goal of this Euros project, me and my supervisors still decided it would be good to get some sort of preliminary results or some preliminary data on a select, select few number of people to actually check if our model was working as predicted. So what we have here are the dwell times for a Lisa Zhu curve with two lobes or two peaks at a value of delta t for 0.156 seconds. This experiment, experiment was only done on very close friends and family with their, express, with their express permission. This data is the data of three participants for this specific Lisa Zhu curve and frequency. While there's not enough data to actually make a definite conclusion, we can see that if we had more participants, we could argue that it definitely resembles a Poisson or gamma distribution. So what you can see is that we were able to successfully design and implement an experiment to test our improved model of bistable perception. 
and the fact that this experiment was successfully designed and implemented solely using Python 3 means that any future work can easily be accessible provided that they have the source code available. If you scan one of my QR codes in the previous slide, you'll also have full access to the source code on Pastebin. And while the preliminary data gathering was successful, the results, we, we could not get any definite results, but we could argue them to be a gamma distribution. The actual challenges I faced during this EUROS project was the actual creation of the curves needed to perform this experiment, because I had to use FFmpeg, which I'd never used before, the actual programming issues involved with making the experiment to begin with, and how to program an efficient way to automate the analysis of the data. Given enough time, all of these were sorted, but they still proved a great challenge for me to complete. And from this, I have learned how to properly manage my time efficiently and effectively and how to overcome blocks of progress when I want to get a task done. This can be either splitting larger tasks into smaller ones or moving on to a different problem and taking regular breaks in between. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions that you might have.